So we've gone into the details of what your treatment protocol would look like with the diet or the fasting and the the pulsing of the drug, the Dawn. I'm curious now how long, obviously it's going to depend on the type of cancer and, and how invasive it is and how long it's been there and a lot of different factors. But if somebody is trying a protocol like this, how long typically do they need to do something like this to get to a point when they can, you know, go to a diet and lifestyle to manage the cancer at that point versus all these other things? Yeah, no, it's hard. It's a good question. I, I, I don't know. Um, well, I mean, what are your choices? <laughs> right? I mean, what are your choices? Uh, well, someone could say, listen, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that for the rest of my life. And the answer is you might not have to do that, but we can't be 100% sure uh, about that. Let me give you let me give you an example from a couple of one case published Pablo Kelly and, and the other case uh from an individual that that I know um uh from Norway and uh he's he did a big film on this in it's all in Norwegian um uh, Ter, uh, Terje from Norway and he we have two examples of what the question exactly to address address your question Pablo um Took no radiation, no chemo, no steroids. Uh, his tumor continued to grow for three years, slowly, slowly. He was in a carnivore kind of keto, uh, mostly meats and stuff. Um, and eventually it grew to the point where he had to have it debulked, cut out. Because we all looked and he said, it's not, it's not, be, this diet alone without drug is not causing your tumor to regress completely. So he had it debulk. First, they said it was a non-operable uh, tumor. It was uh, inoperable. So you wouldn't be able to get it all out. Then after three years of ketogenic metabolic therapy, the, they looked out of the CAT scan MRI and said, oh, this thing might be uh, debulked more completely than it was three years earlier. So he said, okay. So he gets the tumor out. And they, the, the uh, neurosurgeon the surgeon said, we think we got most of it. Oh, okay. So Pablo thinks he's out of the woods. Um, goes back not to uh, the same kind of, he was keeping his G glucose ketone index pretty good around 2.0 or below. After the debulking surgery, they said, oh, it looks like we got a lot of the tumor out. So he started to transition back to a more carbohydrate kind of diet. And then the next MRI about, um, I don't know, six or eight months later showed growth um, of the tumor. So put the fear of God in him. And he went right back onto a more restricted diet. And you could see the damn tumor, the, the images going down. Now, after another three years, the tumor was continued to grow and grow, but very slowly and debulked. So he's had two debulking surgeries. Um, he's out over eight years of survival. He's got married, has two children. He would have not had any of that had he, had he done the, the standard of care up front. So the question is, will he have to use the rest of his life? And he, so far, he hasn't taken Don or uh, Embendazole or some of the other drugs that we know ca can work on this. He's very comfortable the way he's doing. The other, the other fellow from, um, had melanoma uh, from Norway. And he could actually see the lesions on his leg get bigger the more the more carbs he took in. And when he stopped the carbs, he could actually see the lesions going down. I mean, it was like he had the pictures of going up and going down. It's unbelievable. So he said, listen, if I want that tumor out of my body, I got to stop taking these carbohydrates. So he switched over his diet to meats and all kinds of things, but very, very low in carbohydrates. And he's he, he's fine. I mean, he's been out years now. And um, he, he knows that this may come back, but he just prefers to change his diet and lifestyle so it doesn't come back. And that's the individual choice that people are going to have to make. Does that mean you have to drop out of society just so you don't have your tumor grow? No, it doesn't. I mean, he's perfectly interactive with all kinds of people and uh, conventions and, and, and lectures and all kinds of stuff. So but I think you really probably have to really restrict uh, the kinds of foods that make your blood sugar go up. Um, I think that's the safest way, but you're rolling the dice. And, and I have no idea whether someone who has managed their cancer for several years without a recurrence, they really feel good about their life, their health, and then all of a sudden they, they want to go back and enter into uh, a diet that has a lot of carbs in it most of the time. and I don't know 
uh, what we can say about. We haven't had enough uh, examples and publications to show, let's take two groups of people. One's metabolically managed, doing really, really well. Another group that was metabolically managed really, really well. Let's keep these guys on their same diet and lifestyle, and let's let these guys return to the way they were before they had cancer. And then compare and contrast the two groups. Who's going to do a trial like that? You know, think about it. You really talked about do the drug when you were talking about Pablo's case. I yeah. wasn't sure if he had any of the drug. Did he have any done early on in his treatment? No. Nothing. Okay. In in the second case, any Don in there at all or no? No. no. So um, we only know Don works really well because we have preclinical studies to show that it does. And it works a hell of a lot better on the metastatic kind of cell than it does on the stem cells. Not to say that it doesn't work on cancer stem cells. But, you know, we're building these cocktails all the time, diet drug cocktails. And as I said, the two fuels are glucose and glutamine. So the diet drug cocktail is designed to keep the rest of the cells healthy while you strategize on how to shut down glucose and glutamine. So some tumors are more glucose dependent than glutamine dependent. And some tumors appear to be more glutamine dependent than glucose dependent. But that doesn't mean they use, they're use they restricted to one fuel versus the other. It's just that their proportionality of using the two fuels can differ. So our, our viewpoint is what's the best ther therapy that will uh, eliminate those two fuels simultaneously? Uh, and, then, and then if we find out there's still some level of growth, because don't forget, as I said, there's many steps in that glutaminolysis pathway that could be targeted uh, with some drugs. And we're still learning about that. So, I mean, believe me, this is not a, a done deal. Uh, we, we've just opened the door into a, a world of new approaches for managing cancer. A and in the future, we'll be able to build much better diet drug cocktails to take care of all of these outlier cells and all of these kinds of things. We're just telling you that the, the, the framework uh, by which the strategy will eventually be built on this press pulse concept uh, but the physicians, clinics, guys, these guys are going to be the ones perfecting all this stuff when they see the outcome in their treated patients. So it's like anything. You're going to learn diet, doses, timing, and scheduling for various types of people. Their body weights, sex, their age, all of these kinds of things must be brought into consideration. How many other uh, diseases do they have besides cancer? I and mean, this is another thing. We've seen patients come into the clinic. They, they have parasite infections. Their blood work looks like hell. I mean, they're all off the metabolic in a many different type 2 diabetes, high blood pressure, hypertension. They have all kinds of things. All that stuff has to be brought back into a semi-normal state. And then you strategically use low doses of drugs to target and kill the tumor cells while not putting the patient at a metabolic uh, balance. So again, you really have to be the artesian of the understanding of the human body and how it works uh, and how best you can fit that patient with the, with, the, with the therapy. So when it comes to published research and it comes to drugs like Dawn and other drugs in that family, is that only been looking at animal models to this point? Well, um, they no. There, there are clinical trials on some of these drugs that are going on right now. Uh, the problem with these trials is no one is combining the drug with the metabolic therapy. So they want to see if a, a glutamine tar yes, glutamine targeting drug has been used in the past. Was it a blockbuster? No, it was not a blockbuster. Does it become more powerful when you put it with the ketogenic? Absolutely. So, but they don't want to do that because they want to get the, uh, the they're looking for uh, don't forget the Food and Drug Administration says if you can, your patients can live an extra two months, we'll, we'll give you approval uh, on that drug. I mean, we don't want extra two months. We want years of, of, so, but they will not do the trial with the ketogenic diet because I was told by several drug guys, we won't know if it's the ketogenic diet or the drug that's making the difference. We got to know if it's the drug. I said, what about the patient? Ah, it's got to be, we got, it's not the patient. It's the revenue generation from the drug they make. So again, what's your, what's your strategy here? Is it keeping, how long can you keep your patient alive? Or is it, is it how are you going to be able to make this drug a blockbuster? None of these drugs are ever going to be blockbusters. I can tell you that right now. The only way you're going to get real powerful therapeutic benefit is you got to know how to use that drug with the appropriate diet to get the full power of what you're doing. And so far, nobody wants to do that. If you enjoyed that clip, press here for the full episode. I'll see you over there. When I'm talking to you about, almost nobody in the field knows anything that I'm saying here. 
And how do I know that? Because they're not using these techniques in their, in their clinics. If they, if they understood what I'm saying, they would be transitioning over to this immediately.